Yeah, point of no return. I'm telling you all of this because I believe that after what I've done, in about five minutes or so, nobody will be able to tell the same story the way I want to say it. What's funny is that it's impossible you will even hear this story unless you read about it tomorrow in the papers. The metal is still hot. My breath is slowed. I feel my body like never before, like it's a new thing. I can feel my blood and every inch of the concrete beneath my feet. I smell everything. I smell the dirt on the floor. I smell the oil of the parked cars in this garage. I smell the wind coming through the open window. I feel like I'm falling, like on a Ferris wheel when they reverse the feed, going backwards. You know when you go down fast, you feel like your feet are going to go right up over your head and your stomach's in your throat, like you're going right out of your senses. That's how I feel, but you know you're really not going to fall. Or like a kid on a swing set, he pushes with his feet, pumping back and forth until a certain height, and then the chain slacks down, jarring his bones. But this is completely different. I can hear the sirens now. la ti da This whole thing's about me. I regretted starting the whole thing. It had to be easier than this. I'm not even going to finish the rest. It will happen on its own. I'm not thinking about you, or these words, or the sirens, or the swing set, or the ferris wheel, or the walls with the rat holes, or the smell of the oil, or my sweat, or my blood, or even my breath. I'll just inhale, take it in, hold on to it, and smile. Yeah, breathe out, smile. Smile. Hank and me were over at Relays drinking whiskey. Hank was pissed. Fucking bitch. His lady was leaving him again. I shook my head back. Bitch. Hank squirmed up on his bar stool like a lizard, his eyes squinting with rage. You're fucking right. You're fucking fucking right. He looked around and saw people were starting to stare. So he just yelled louder. That's the way it was. God damn it, I must be cursed, he said, taking a shot of whiskey. I could sort of relate. My wife had been the love of my life. Hank liked my wife too, the mother of my boy. My boy had her eyes, and they were the finest eyes I had ever seen. Hank finally calmed down. The bartender was good and didn't say a thing. Only poured us out another. He did his job proper. We both took the shots back together in silence. I remember the time Hank met Maria. He took me aside when she went to the bathroom. She is a 10. A 10, my friend. Don't you fuck this one up. Hank's lips spread with his dopey grin. He loved to put so much whiskey into that dumb face, it was like a dog lapping up water. I drank too. We both had that in common. Our women and our whiskey. I took a chance with my girl and he took a chance with his. But we both came up short. You roll the dice, you pick a card, you scratch a ticket, you get lucky. But tonight, I'm watching him scream on his bar stool. I was still a little lucky and I knew it. Maria lets me see Caleb on the weekends. Last time I had him, I took him to the park. He was curious. He wanted to know why the grass was green. I told him because all the other colors were already picked. Blue went first. The sky was big. White was second. Clouds could be big too. And green came second to last. I let him play in the dirt. He kept looking back at me to see if I'd yell at him. I'm sure Maria never let him do that. But hey, what are fathers for? Why is the dirt wet? Because it was sad. But why? Because all the other colors were used. It got stuck with mud. He cupped the mud in his hands and his little face turned up. Then he blew the mud a kiss. He washed his hands off in the sprinklers and ran off back to the swings. I chased him over the green grass. Push me higher, daddy. Higher, higher. Like a rocket ship. Boom! The slack chain went loose at first, then cracked each time he got higher and higher. He had finally swung as high as I could push him. The slack came down with a crack on the chain, and he started to cry as the swing slowed down with him in the seat. Come here, I said to him. I held him in the swing. He nudged hard into my arms. Why, Daddy? You were going too high. Well, I don't want to go anymore. You don't have to. You stay right here. You stay close to the ground. Stay close to the dirt. Hank was drunk. I was drunk. We watched the big TV over the bar. A well-groomed newscaster came on the screen. 
and his face glistened under the studio lights. There was a stolen car chase in Los Angeles. Some armed robbery. A little assault. The helicopter camera followed the car on the freeway, and the lanes were wide open. Behind the speeding yellow car, a steady line of black and whites followed fast. Hank shouted out, Run them all down! Push it, man! Push it! He cheered. Some others caught on and started to clap. It's stupid. He's just gonna get caught. Hank looked at me with his big, dopey eyes. Yeah, but the ride, man. The ride. At least he took the ride. That's gonna be the best ride of his life. That's gonna be the last ride of his life, I said. One of the cops slammed into the sedan's bumper. The newscaster squawked. Bob, it looks like the LAPD is now trying to stop the driver. Yes, he's going for the cutoff. No, he's still going. May I remind the viewer? The suspect is armed and dangerous. I shook my head and watched the little car move fast. Where do you think you're going? I see the elbow of the guy outside the driver's side window. You can't get out. They're going to get you. They always are going to get you. This went on for a bit, and Hank kept on yelling. One of the cops slammed into the sedan. The trunk blew wide open and the car spun in circles. Well, it looks as if the police have got him finally. Hank put down his draft in silence. The car spun to the side of the freeway, and in seconds, the cops were out of their cars with their guns drawn, circling the automobile. The camera zoomed in. This is it. Door opened. Smoke flared from the guns, and like ants, they descended upon the sedan. Oh, God. The bar went quiet. Seconds later, they dragged the body out. He was covered in red. The well-kept people sat with dour faces behind their desks, staring at us from the television. Well, that's that. Hank chugged down the rest of his pint. The murmur of the bar returned. No chance, Hank said. Yeah, no chance. I knew he had no shot. It was simple. You push the edge. You walk up to the line. You cross it. You don't come back. I waited for the subway going downtown to the courts. I could already hear what the judge was going to say. He's wearing his fat black robes. He's got a huge pink Irish face. He holds his gavel in his thick meaty hands. Crack! Unfit parent. Restraining order granted. No contest. Sole custody. I can already see Caleb waving at me from the back of a car window as it pulls away down a gray street. And I'm left alone on the sidewalk. I noticed before the deep cut of the subway where the steel girder tracks lay, there is a yellow painted line. It's the danger zone. A warning. I should have never gone over there after the bars. I had too many whiskeys, but I wanted to see Caleb. I felt like I wouldn't be seeing him much anymore. I just wanted to hold him and have him nudge right into me and put his head into my neck and I'd rub his hair around till the static shocked my hands. I can still remember what happened. Marie is at the door in her bathrobe. She doesn't need to ask this time if I've been drinking. She slams the door in my face and I can smell my hot breath. I don't like the odor. My blood is now on fire. My leg kicks in the door. I'm going through the house but there is no light. And I push the things in my way out of my way. And then I hear the breaking of glass. And then I hear the screams but they are farther away. The neighbors must be around. I find the back screen door swinging open. Maria was always a smart one. She had left with Caleb. Yeah. She was a 10. She was built for these kind of things. And that's when I heard the sirens. Funny. Now they're at the door. And I hear a man say my name. But I am not the man in the car on the television. I'm not stupid. The police have guns to settle disagreements. It is the natural state of mankind. Gunpowder and steel. And I am only flesh. I am only flesh. The subway roared down the track and I feel its wind on my cheeks. I take a step. I look down. I'm deep in the yellow. And it's coming fast. I see the attendant driving the subway car. Wide open eyes. Blue collar. Two kids. Pension. Awards in public service, just one more step. A tragic accident will happen with one more step. Just a little blurb in the paper. No courts, no more whiskey, no restraining orders, no anger, no loss, no more evil eyes eyeing me. Gone is the loneliness. Gone is the shame. I take another step. The horn of the train goes off. 
It's just a warning. The subway car speeds by, and I feel the wind across my face, and the breeze is as good as sex. The best kind of sex. The kind where you lay for hours afterwards thinking of nothing. All of the people in the windows of the train sit still. They are going somewhere else. I want to go where they go. The doors slide open, and I walk in and join them. I read the newspaper, and it says the same thing every day to me. It tells me about the solution. This morning a baby was found in a dumpster off Tremont Street. Her name was Sarah. The search for her mother goes on. Some say she fled to Texas. Some say Arizona. Doesn't really matter, though. The baby is going nowhere. Three are killed by gunfire in Roxbury. All under 19 years old. Their high school graduated them right to the morgue. They were just babies, too. Steel in their hands and a bullet smoking in their chest. It is war every day now. A continual war. War without a name. Without borders. Without presidents. No ideology. No punishments. No law. No end. Kidnappings. Beheadings. No rules. No law. No laws save for the sick laws of man. But I know it's the lava's fault. That bubbling hot molten lava at the center of the earth. Speaking to our dreams and calling us towards this violence. Our dreams are hot like lava. Flip the pages. Unemployment surges. The rifts between people are wide. Wide as the smile on the president's face. It's like Cain and Abel. Two men. Brothers. Out toiling in the fields. A soft wind blows below the amber sunset. One brother looks up, wiping the rich soil from his hands. He takes a breath in. There is wheat and sunflowers and the scent of juniper trees in the air. And he relaxes his shoulders. God is in the little things. The shovel cracks his face open. Red spills out and wets the soil, and the blood fertilizes the ground. The other brother has a hot, oily face, and his chest heaves. His eyes flung open wild like a beast, standing over the body of his brother. His hands are now shaking. His eyes are full of water. He wonders how he got here. He asks God, but there is only silence back. But Abel still bleeds, watering the roots of man. You see, getting the gun was the easy part. It is the natural extension of the arm of man. Fire, natural disasters. Turn page after page, and the ink is gleefully noting our slow descent. We get closer to the brothers. My head hurts. The headaches have been coming again, day after day, waiting for me to wake up. My skull wants to crack open. I don't have insurance to get this fixed. Receiving unemployment does not entitle you to insurance. Only the little manila envelope that arrives every second Tuesday with the state's emblem seared onto its left corner tells me anything. My head is about to bust up. I could spit out metal shards. Yeah, the gun was easy. It sits there now in the corner of my room. The butt is on the ground, and its long steel barrel rests diagonally across the brick wall by my bed. The rents do, but I let it slack. The landlord can wait. There are more important things going on right now. Car crashes. Bra ads. Diplomacy is failing. Leaders stalk the earth, pushing out their meaty chests. I hold a gun in my lap and touch it like a child. It has no bad dreams. It does not cry. I hear the voices of all of those who have lived for nothing. And I feel the lava. It is hot, waiting to render the flesh the bone. Robbery, white collar crime, insurgents in Syria, stocks rise, currency moves like the cell in the blood veins, making the muscles flex. My boss had only spoken to me twice, the day I was hired and the day I was fired. His hair was perfect, and he smelled of spice. The ink in the newspaper might as well be blood. It smears on the fingertips of the man who reads it each morning. He puts more bacon into his mouth, and the day waits for him. His arteries harden. Cancer is now hidden and waiting. He does not know this. 
His family does not know this. He sips his coffee and rubs the newspaper ink on his trousers. That's the thing, man. You ain't got no money. You got no power. You got no movement. It's the way it is. You've got nothing, brother. You got no clout in the grid. Now Hank is trying his best here. The people at the bar pour drinks into their mouths, and they sit hunched, waiting, tired, and hungry. Hank is trying to cheer me up, but I'm a thousand miles away. You'll come out of it on top. You'll be above them all. His fat face is smeared with whiskey sweat. The summer is thick upon us. The fat gathers around his face. He's getting bigger by the month. Fuck that job, man. I am more than the American dream. I am the world's dream. I am the story of the ages. I am the dream of all those that have come before me. You meet a girl. She'll be a gray one. You'll settle down again. His mouth is moving, but I cannot hear. He is butter melting on toast. Two plus two. The addition was easy. Make up the sum of the parts of the whole. The whiskey keeps the headaches away for now. But his words are television. And I turn the show off. It could be worse. Think about it. Sure, I could be Hank, folding inwards upon my own fat. I could have other maladies. I could have no limbs. I could have AIDS. I could have secret tumors. I could have the marrow of my bones rotting out. I could lose my eyes in a traffic accident. I could break my spine slipping on oil spots. But I haven't. I am clean still. Nothing is wrong with me. I only hear now the lava and the dirt of the earth. Money isn't everything, man. I am the completion. This is the system. I am the mathematics of humanity. Got no clout in the grid, man. That's it. That's it. No clout in the grid. The papers do not lie. I am perfect. It is not I who has failed. It is the world that has failed. It is the molten lava burning away the hearts of man. And the truth is in the newspapers. It's between the lines. If you look close enough, you can see the heart of the matter. You could see the rifle, and you can see the window. You could see the barrel slip out from the sill seven stories up as you walk below. But where are you really going? Shopping? Paying rent? Walking around with your love? Little arms slipping into little arms? But guess what? I am now watching you. I am now seeing you. The barrel is out, and the wind hits the metal, and there are no cries. There is only the wind. Now getting here was easy. Walking up the steps was easy. The concrete staircase is firm. The rifle under my coat touches my chest like a cold fingertip above my heart. I walk up the endless stairs, and the carport is empty. I move to the window, and down below, over the sill, seven stories down, they walk around like wind-up toys. I was like them, but now I'm the big version of the small ones down there, and I wait holding my breath, watching them through the scope. They are perfect there too, down below, perfect and waiting. Any time now, they will be coming for me. But I have this one in my scope now, moving slow. He has his hands in his pockets. His hair is mucked up by product. He has paid his rent. He has gone shopping today. He is on the way to see his son. He has 10 fingers. He has 10 toes. He sweats, he smiles, he weeps, he is classical music, he is an overture. He stares out, stopping at the corner, waiting for the traffic to slow. The cars move past him. They are fish in a great river. He looks up into the sun, but does not see me. His face is perfect. His nose is strong. He has a future. He has a past. A child, a mother, a brother. Two payments a week. His signature is perfect on all his contracts. His wife makes him dinner. He meets her at 6.30. They talk of their day and eat together. And in the darkness at night, they make quiet love. And he moves fast above her now. He sleeps with her head on his chest. And he tells his son about the colors. And he tells him about the dirt. And he pushes him high in his swing. And he holds his boy when he cries. I pull the trigger. And his face explodes. I reel back from the kick. The man's body falls limp and cracks down on the concrete. I feel like I'm back in that swing, falling backwards. My stomach in my throat, but it's all in slow motion. I am above them, but there is no wind. 
There are only the screams of the crowd below, and they move insect fast and surround the body. I do not move. I can't even hear the footsteps coming. I am the system. I am the solution. I am to be read about tomorrow in the newspaper. I have now etched myself into the ink. I am part of the lava. I lie within the smoke of time. The sirens grow louder, and the footsteps are coming. The police cars are now outside, and they line the grounds around the building. I hold the hot metal in my hands, and I point the rifle to the staircase door. The door will open. It has to. I feel nothing as I ever have. I am weightless. I can see my boy and I riding together, dropping slowly back in the Ferris wheel seat. I touch his head, and he looks up at me. I nod knowingly, and he, in his eyes, can see what I see. And this message is now passed down to him, into his mind, where it will sit, and where it will wait. The men's voices yell. They are behind the staircase door now. I close my eyes, and I think of the yellow line. Nobody will tell this story. It has to be read about tomorrow. I will see you there. I can feel my body becoming ink already. I can see the subway car coming down the tunnel. I can feel the breeze on my face. The lights blind my eyes. I close them. The door bursts open. I step across the line.